Data Sampling – Manual and Computerized Methods of Active and Passive Data Collection So, data sampling is the process of selecting a subset of data from a larger data set to analyze and draw conclusions about the whole collection. So we're taking a small portion, a small calculated portion from a larger data set, and that's where we're doing our analysis in order to build our insights and find trends within that. Okay, so it is used to make data analysis more manageable and efficient, especially when dealing with larger data sets. So hopefully it consumes less resources and less time, but still gives us meaningful results. Proper sampling ensures that a sample is representative of the entire data population. So it goes across multiple demographics or categories and gives us a meaningful result. It's not just skewed to one direction because when that happens, then we have what's known as bias. And when we have bias, okay, it means our results are inaccurate because we've only looked at one specific type of data within a larger data set. Okay, and this can be done intentionally or unintentionally, okay, but we really want to minimize that element in order to provide accurate insights from our data when we are analyzing a sample. Sampling is crucial in data science and allows for quicker analysis without compromising the quality of results. So picking out sample of what we're going to analyze as a part of this process is crucial because we need it to be meaningful and reflective of the full data set, though obviously smaller and more manageable for our analysis. So what we're going to take a look at now is firstly active methods that are both non-computerized and computerized in collecting data and then passive methods once again in both uh, active and passive ways. Okay, so let's first start off with active data collection. So the direct interaction with a data source requiring deliberate action to gather data. So what this means is I actually go to the data source and I need it to be active and doing something that I want in order for me to get data. So on the manual methods, it could be that firstly I'm doing a survey. In surveys, I might go to a group of people and give them out a piece of paper and ask them to fill in that, give me feedback about something. So they need to be active and fill in their answers into that document so that I can gather data. They are the data source in that element. Then we also have interviews, which is very similar, though this time I'm actually sitting down with people and talking to them and asking them questions. And they need to be active through talking back to me and giving responses. So that's a manual version, once again, of an active data collection method. And then although this one sounds broad, observations, it can also be classified as active because I ask someone, could you show me how you do this in your workplace? And then they are active through showing me a demonstration and I learn from their demonstration about what they're doing and I accumulate data in that manner. So they are all manual methods of active data collection. I also have computerized methods, okay? And computerized methods, and you can probably see a correlation with some of them too, is I can push out an online form. And an online form could be virtually a survey, but I'm taking advantage of technology to send it out as an email. I can use different screen objects to make data collection more meaningful, and it can also collate and centralize results as well. Okay, but once again, it is a questionnaire sent out for people to fill in, once again, being active. There are also interactive apps where you can actually have within the app provide feedback and people can write feedback into the app or send you a message in order to give you data based on whether it's the app themselves they are reviewing or just a way for them to communicate with your business. And then finally is sensors. Okay, we put sensors in place, okay, and we establish them, and then they can measure things going on in the environment there. Okay, so they're another computerized method too. So they are our active methods of data collection. We're now going to jump over to passive uh, areas of data collection. So here we are get, they are automated in how they work and do not require okay the actual participant who we're trying to get data from to be actively doing anything. They're kind of just doing what they do and we're extracting data. Okay, now that sounds quite broad at first. Okay, but sometimes they might even know that they're actually having their data collected. And once I start showing examples, it'll become a bit more clearer, but they're not being active in supporting the data collection. They're just using a product or doing what they're doing. And we're getting data kind of from behind the scenes, okay, passively, okay, kind of almost without them knowing. They, it might be in a terms and conditions, not like done secretly or, you know, under the table, anything like that, okay? But yeah, we're getting it kind of without them knowing, and it's almost a more natural way of collecting data. 
so firstly are the manual methods okay so first one is logs okay recording data manually okay like a security officer keeping an entry log where you know they're just observing what's going on through all the cameras and writing down anything that looks suspicious or that is noteworthy okay the data that they're gathering the people on the other side of the cameras that they're viewing they got no idea that he's doing that so it's passive another one is tallying Okay, you might have learned about this in primary school. I remember an activity where we were just watching cars go past and we're tallying what colors the cars were. The people driving those cars, they had no idea we were tallying them. Okay, we were just observing them and, you know, ticking off the tally every time we saw a blue car, a white car, whatever. So there was no specific activity from the actual data source supporting my uh, allocation of data. Okay, it was more being done behind the scenes through observations themselves. And that's why I mentioned observations and manual method was quite broad because yes, it can be used in a manual capacity too. Okay, when the data source doesn't know that you're actually doing this. Jumping over then to computerized methods. Okay, these are things you may very well be aware of. Firstly is cookies. Okay, cookies track your user behavior on a website. Do you know what they're tracking? You know that there are cookies active because you have to usually accept them and click on them. But once you've accepted the cookies, you don't really know what they're actually doing. Okay, and you're not really doing anything active to support the cookies data collection. You're just using the website like normal and it's gathering your data. IoT devices as well. They're smart devices. You're connecting to a network. And then as things are happening on the network, okay, it is changing things it's changing how data is being sent around the network it's got smart devices it knows where there are bottlenecks happening it's restructuring things so the internet devices are actually making changes to the benefit of the humans connecting the network without any active involvement and then finally social media social media tracks your impression data what uh, are you visiting whose pages are you visiting what are you liking what are you actually viewing on those pages too what groups are you connected to they collect all this in order to build up recommendation data and improve your user experience on the app to keep you coming back to the social media platform. But once again, it is done very seamlessly and passive. It's not like it's asking you, what do you like? It's just kind of saying, oh, this is what you're viewing. This is where you're going. All right, maybe you'll like this page or this YouTube video. Okay, it's things like that. So it's all kind of done behind the scenes. So that's what we're talking about with passive data collection. So I hope this video has given you an understanding of data sampling. Essentially, at first, that when we're not analyzing an entire data set, we're getting a subset that is hopefully a representative of the entire data set and analyzing that because it's more timely and manageable and efficient. And then we have active data collection, which means the data source that we're extracting data from is kind of contributing and knows that we're trying to get the data and they're supporting this through manual methods such as surveys, interviews and observations and computerized methods through online forms, interactive apps and sensors. And then we have our passive data collection, which is more done from behind the scenes where the data source is not necessarily contributing or even knowing that we're actually getting data, that hence it's passive, but we're getting almost a more natural view of the actual data itself because the data source is just acting normally. It's the way it always operates without having knowing it's being observed. So our manual methods there are logs and tallying and computerized methods of cookies, IoT devices, and social media, where we're gathering data from behind the scenes and the data source is just doing what it's doing. And we're collecting data, meaningful data about that data source in action. So I hope this video is giving you a distinguishment of being these, between these classifications, as well as an understanding of what data sampling is.